Do you have tingling in these three fingers and maybe part of this one? Do me a favor, do this or this and hold it for 60 seconds. Or tap here or apply some pressure here. Does that make these fingers go numb or burn or hurt? If it does, you probably have carpal tunnel syndrome. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to relieve carpal tunnel syndrome in the comfort of your home. Stay tuned. If you have numbness or tingling in your thumb, your middle ring, or even a bit of this finger, it could be burning or pain that kind of comes from your wrist and either goes this way and sometimes up your arm. If you have pain at night and feel like you have to shake your hand to get rid of it, you likely have carpal tunnel syndrome the most common nerve entrapment or neuropathy there is. If you've had it for a while, you probably have some weakness, some clumsiness with this hand, and you might even notice some atrophy or wasting in some of these muscles. When the median nerve is irritated or entrapped in the carpal tunnel, those are the symptoms you'll experience. The good news, there are some things that you can do at home to help relieve your discomfort. But I always suggest you speak to your doctor for the best care for your specific case. Repetitive strain injury is the most common cause and is likely from over typing or using your mouse or jobs that require you to repeatedly flex and extend your wrist. This can absolutely be one of the main triggers that is causing that discomfort in your wrist, hand, and even your arm. So there's gonna be three parts to this routine to really help alleviate some of the pain and tension in the carpal tunnel area. And so I want you to do all three of these things because for some, one of these things will work very, very well, but for others, you're gonna to need to do all three to find out which is the best one so it's easiest to just go through the routine with me and learn how to do the movements in sequential order so you can get the best results in the shortest amount of time. The first part is going to be muscle stripping. We're gonna strip the muscles of the forearm and in the hand, the thenar and hypothenar muscles can really help reduce some tension and really unlock some of the area in the carpal bones to help relieve some of that pressure on the median nerve. The first one we're gonna do is very simply, we're going to just take the wrist, we're gonna flex the wrist, and we're gonna pull back as we extend. And we can work the inside, the middle, and the outside, and really work up into the belly of the wrist flexor muscles as well. You're really stripping out the tendons and the muscles that go through the carpal tunnel to really help reduce some tension. You can work right up to the elbow. Take your time with this. You might need some cream to reduce the friction here, but just really move nice and slowly as you strip out these tendons. You should work on this for probably about a minute at least to warm up the area. Now, another really good area to do this is these muscles here. So one of the easiest ways to do it is take your finger and thumb, you're gonna contract the muscles, and then you're gonna use your thumb as you extend open. And you're gonna do 10 to 15 passes on both. I'll use my index finger here, just so you can see what I'm actually doing. Thumb. And again, use and find all parts, and I can you can change fingers like you're seeing me doing too. Change the angle, pick different points on the muscle. The idea here is to try and get as much release in that area as possible. And then you can move into the carpal tunnel itself and just strip back towards your body. Just in itself, that actually starts to feel really, really good. So you have two areas, remember, you wanna do the flexors, and then you wanna do some of the muscles in the hand just to really help warm things up and get things moving to take some pressure off that median nerve. For this next one, we wanna stretch open the carpal tunnel here. So this will be a bit awkward for me because I am showing you on a small table and probably using really bad posture, which I don't like. But for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you how to do this. What we're trying to do is we're trying to open up this space. So an easy way to do it is to get a solid surface, take one of the sides of your hand, and you're gonna push 
down slightly while you take your other hand and pull up. Keep this table straight. And so what you're doing is you're really pulling open that area. It's just a good stretch. So I'm going to pull open as I push down and hold this stretch for about 15 to 20 seconds. I'll show you from the side here too. From the side, you're going to push down and I'm going to pull the other hand up. You're trying to visualize that open. Another way people can do it is if you have the flexibility in no arthritis in your hands, you can take your pinky and your thumb and then push forward. What you're trying to do is you're trying to open up that carpal tunnel, hold it there. So you can do it by the fingers. If that doesn't work, you can do it by both sides. And again, you're opening up and pushing forward. You should feel a stretch right in this area. You're going to hold this for, as I say, 15 up to 30 seconds. And you can do this two to three times a day for it to be effective. So now we're going to move on to the nerve or tendon glide exercises. The first thing we're going to do is a median nerve glide or a median nerve floss. I really like this one because I find it really effective. And it's one of those exercises that will help desensitize the nerve to help give you some relieving symptoms of your carpal tunnel syndrome. This one's going to be done standing where your arm is 90 degrees with your fingers pointing out. You're going to take your opposite hand and at the same time as we pull up to horizontal, we're going to pull the fingers down and hold for three to five seconds and then come back to the starting position. There are some varieties in terms of how you can do this. You can start with it extended and then come up if you want and then come up and keep it extended. So you could, there are a few different variations. Try a couple of different ones to see if you can feel it or which one you can feel better. From the side, 90 degrees. We can start with the fingers flat. We can extend and then come straight up and come back down, extend and then come straight up. Hold for three to five seconds and come down. This one, you want to perform for two to three sets of 10 repetitions. Again, hold anywhere between two and five seconds. You can do this twice a day as well. Okay, moving to the next gliding or flossing exercise. To start, we're going to curl our fingers or flex our fingers, and then we're going to bring it into a fist. Back up, fingers, fist, and thumb. Back up, fingers, fist, and thumb. Back up. We're going to start fingers, full hand, and thumb, and come up. You can do this exercise two to three sets for 10 to 15 reps twice daily. So now we're on to the strengthening part. Find a table or a flat surface where you can rest your hand comfortably down. We're going to do an isometric contraction here where you're just going to take your hand and push it. So if you can see I'm pushing in to the flat surface. You're going to hold this for five to 10 seconds and then rest. What we're doing is we're strengthening flexion, but in the stationary plane or an isometric contraction. The same is true. We're going to actually do extension as well. And all we're going to do is simply put our hand across and we're going to pull back on our hand. Hold it for about five seconds or so. Somebody can hold it for 10 and then you're going to rest. You're going to do each of these movements for two sets of 10 reps or so that will help strengthen the muscles around the carpal bones and the carpal tunnel to help support a healthy median nerve. And then finally, the last exercise I'm going to show you is you're going to use a water bottle, a soup can. If you have a really light weight, again, we're going to strengthen in flexion and extension. And all we're going to do is, again, 10 repetitions of two sets up to twice daily. So this is an extension exercise. You can flip it over and do the same thing with a flexion exercise and just go through your full range of motion. You don't have to be fast, just really isolating some of these muscles in your forearm, again, to help support a healthy carpal tunnel. And then a variation is you can pronate back and forth and supinate the opposite direction. 
Again, you can do these for two sets of 10 repetitions. You can go straight back and forth if you want, mobilizing your wrist joint, all with the aim of relieving those symptoms of carpal tunnel. A few things I want to mention. If you're doing these exercises or some of the tests that I showed you at the beginning of the video and you're not getting any relief, then there is a possibility that your symptoms are coming from your neck. Check out this video right here to show you how you can relieve a pinched nerve in your neck at home with some specific exercises to help the nerves in your neck. Carpal tunnel syndrome can be downright frustrating. It affects our quality of life. It prevents us from sleeping. It also prevents us from doing the things we like on a day-to-day -day basis. Don't give up hope. I know you can get better. But I do have to say this. If your symptoms are progressive, there's no relief in sight and they're worsening, please see your doctor because in some severe cases, surgery is certainly an option. A few other things you can do to help yourself with this routine is make sure you warm the area up. You can apply some heat to the area for about 10 minutes before you do this routine. Then a really effective post-routine thing you can do is apply it cold in 10 to 15 minute intervals. It can help reduce any inflammation. It can help give you the relief that you desire. One other thing you can try if you haven't is to wear a brace at night. Help keep your wrist in neutral position. It gives the carpal tunnel a chance to deal with the inflammation and rest so it's not constantly irritated and inflamed causing those symptoms. If you enjoyed this video, please show some support by giving me the thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, maybe you consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell below so you can be informed when I upload a new video. If you have a question or comment, leave it below. I'll be sure to get to your question and answer it as soon as possible. As always, I appreciate you tuning in and I can't wait to see you on my next video. Until then, stay well.